President Trump is urging Republicans to stick together and fight following a tumultuous week in Washington. Mr. Trump's tweet comes as the White House tries to recover from remarks by acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney. He admitted the U.S. withheld $400 million in military aid to Ukraine as a form of quid pro quo. President Trump is not a big fan of foreign aid. Never has been, still isn't. Doesn't like spending money overseas, especially um, when it's poorly spent. Um, and that is exactly what drove this decision. Did he also mention to me in the past that the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. And I have news for everybody. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. Still surprising to hear. For more on this, CBS News White House correspondent Weijia Jiang joins me now. Weijia, what's the response been from the White House and President Trump on these comments? You know, President Trump was asked very directly yesterday to clarify those comments from his acting chief of staff. And his response was, I believe he already clarified it. And then he quickly changed the subject. And Mulvaney did issue a statement saying that his words were misconstrued and that there was absolutely no quid pro quo. But we just heard him. Uh, you can't say that the words were misconstrued when his words could not have been more clear. That's what came out yes, of his mouth. This is ex exactly, this is exactly why we held up the money. And by the way, he didn't just say it, he was defiant about it, saying, get over it, it's no big deal. So now he's trying to walk it back. But I can tell you that other sources in the White House were pretty disturbed that he uh, came out here at all because they were really aware that he was exposing himself and being vulnerable to many questions about Ukraine. And he could have made a misstep like this that is now costing uh, the president because he has to sort of try to clean up this mess, as well as Republicans um, on Capitol Hill. You know, they have stood by the president for the most part um, because they said, if you look at the call transcript, there was no quid pro quo. But now Mulvaney um, has just contradicted that. So it's really hard to continue using that defense, even though he's trying to say, I didn't mean it. Yeah, it's interesting. President Trump also pushing back, as you know, Weijia, against criticism of his decision to pull U.S. troops out of Syria. There's even been response from his own party. What are we hearing? Yeah, they have been very sharp about this decision and the criticism is ongoing and it's significant because for so long Jamie we've seen uh, Republicans sort of refusing to break with President Trump or at least use soft language when they might disagree with him because they're well aware of uh, their constituents and what that might mean for them politically but in this case very quickly one by one uh, Republicans came out and condemned the decision in fact uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell just wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post, and he said withdrawing U.S. forces from Syria is a grave strategic mistake. It will leave the American people and homeland less safe, embolden our enemies, and weaken important alliances. It doesn't get more clear than that. Um, another Trump ally, Senator Lindsey Graham, said this is the biggest mistake of the Trump presidency. But as expected, the president is not backing down. He is saying uh, this is absolutely the right decision. He points to the current very short ceasefire uh, happening right now and, and says, um, you know, this is not our fight to fight. Uh, and so he clearly, regardless of all the pushback he's getting, is not going to change his mind. Well, he is about to be in the middle of a re-election campaign. So we'll see as more Republican leaders speak out how this ends up turning out or if he changes his mind on that. But the president has also claimed some European nations have agreed to take ISIS prisoners detained by Kurdish fighters. Right. Is this true? And have we seen other countries say this? Uh, that's a great question because so far, no. The other countries have not made announcements and have not said that um, formally that they were actually going to take these fighters in. And it matters because uh, this is exactly why there is so much concern about the president um, abandoning the Kurdish fighters to fend for themselves as the Turkish military moves in because now they're dealing with this new incursion as they were watching over and detaining uh, ISIS fighters. And so immediately, you know, Republicans, Democrats were all sounding the alarm saying that, you know, if the Kurdish fighters are not there uh, to watch and capture and, and keep 
their watch over these fighters, then there could be a resurgence of ISIS. And that's why, um, you know, they were really, really trying to convince the president not to go through with this. Um, as far as who is going to handle these fighters so far, those European countries have not come out and said, you know, bring them over here. Yeah, nobody's raising their hand at that one. Uh, before I let you go, President Trump announced Friday he's going to nominate Dan Brulette to take over as energy secretary when Rick Perry leaves at the end of the year. What do we know about him? We know that he's been the number two in the energy department since uh, 2017, and he has a lot of experience in the private sector as well as the energy sector. He was the senior vice president and head of public policy for USAA. Um, he was also a vice president at Ford Motor Company. But then um, in Washington, he has uh, worked as chief of staff to the House Energy and Commerce Committee, as well as the assistant secretary for congressional and intergovernmental affairs in the George W. Bush administration. But, Jamie, what matters most of all about uh, Brulette is that he has the confidence of President Trump, who tweeted that he was going to nominate him to take over for Rick Perry, saying Dan's experience in the sector is unparalleled, a total professional, and I have no doubt that Dan will do a great job. And as we have seen so many times before, you can have a stellar resume, you can be the talk of the town, but if the president does not approve of you, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he made all this work. Lee Jing, thank you so much. Sure.